author of Putin's War Against Ukraine, Revolution, Nationalism and the Russian-Ukraine War. Very warm welcome uh, to the programme, uh, Taras Kuzio. Um, look, we were just hearing from Mark White there talking about the increasing desperation of President Putin as things seem to be uh, more difficult in this Ukraine invasion than perhaps he might have anticipated. Is that how you would read it? And do you think that makes the situation even more dangerous, given, as so many people are saying, he is an irrational person? You can't really predict what his next move will be. Well, I've just written an op-ed called Is Putin a Madman? So I think it, the, it's, it's a bit more than irrational, shall we say. I think we've all done in life some irrational uh, acts, but this is beyond irrational. Um, he's an angry man. He's narcissistic. He believes that he's right. He believes that Ukraine is a Russian land, that these are Russians, that he's liberating from um, a U.S. puppet state. I mean, those are, those all are, of this is... Those are serious all words, <laughs> madman. Do you really, really believe he is a madman? I think that he has traits what a psychologist wrote a couple of days ago called Humbris syndrome, which includes many different traits, which we would call far more than irrational, such as he's, he's, he's a megalomaniac. He believes that he is Russia's destiny. He believes um, these mythologies and stereotypes about Ukraine that this is a Russian, sorry, a, U, a U.S. puppet state that he's liberating. He's very narcissistic. He is convinced that, that history is on his side, shall we say. I mean, these are traits which we have seen in other leaders which are extremely dangerous. He's out of touch with reality. He's isolated because of the COVID pandemic. Um, he doesn't take advice because he's surrounded by sycophants. He thinks he knows everything. So all of these traits have led to this bumbling war, very not very well planned, hasn't shown the Russian army to be actually very good. Um, and one of the reasons is that he really did believe Ukrainians would be greeting him with flowers, with bread and salt. Um, instead, they're greeting him with stingers, Turkish drones, and British um, missiles. So um, he's angry that... This isn't quite happening like he, he believed it would do. He blames that on Americans on the ground. He thinks Americans are helping Ukrainians, and hence why he, shifts, he threatened nuclear to go sort of nuclear the other day or threatened to sort of go to a higher nuclear alert. So he is unstable. I think more and more people are saying that. Madman, of course, is a different thing. I mean, I haven't seen him stroking a white cat yet. Um, with a, in a kind of a James Bond how, style how, how does he rule? How does he rule? How does he stay in power? Uh, how much would he be looking over his shoulder? Would he be paranoid? Yes, of course, because there's no honour amongst thieves. He's a combination of three personalities. His former Soviet KGB, which makes him very much into conspiracy theories everywhere, um, very much into that side of you know, anti-American xenophobia. Secondly, he's a mafioso. I mean, he's, he has to be the person who's stolen the most out of everybody in Russia because otherwise, you know, the others below him wouldn't respect him. So if he leaves office, he can't leave office because if he did, he'd be put in jail, killed, or he's, at the very least, everything he's stolen would be taken back. And, and thirdly, he's a Russian nationalist. Um, he, of the old style, so he denies the existence of Ukraine and Ukrainians. And that um, combination of those three personalities is not, not good. But Taras, during his decades uh, in power, you know, as a dictator under the you know, attempt to, to convince us it's democratically uh, he's in power, um, he's been adored, hasn't he, by Russians? I mean, people have idolised him. The pictures of him abreast a horse or shirt off or rolling with his oversized dogs. I mean, people, ordinary Russians have adored him. Is that changing, do you think? And could that be his undoing? I mean, in the last few days, we've seen these unprecedented protests. We've seen people queuing at ATMs, unable to get rubles because of the state of the economy after the sanctions. We've seen people being unable to get on the subway because Google and Apple Pay no longer works because of Western sanctions. And will they now finally be questioning exactly what Putin's up to? Yes, I, th I think that's already been sort of his popularity is already declining in that sense. And, in, and this will speed that up. Um, this this invasion of Ukraine will not give him the 
popularity bounce that he had in 2014 when he annexed Crimea from Ukraine, because Crimea has sort of more of a deep myth- mythological connection to Russian nationalism. This this invasion will not be popular in Russian, in Russia. Um, what can we say? Nationalism does sometimes lead to boosts in popularity of leaders, and and that was particularly the case when oil and gas prices were high during the during the sort of first eight to ten years of his of his of his rule. Um, in the last three years, in particular, after he changed the constitution to allow him to stay in power de facto for life. Um, he, he's become more dictatorial. He's become more politically repressive. He's put you know, more people in jail. So he, um, the, the popularity of, of him, of his rule, as it were, has, has already been declined. And I suspect this will, this will increase that. I don't, because I don't think this is a popular war. It will also, the sanctions will also lead to a speeding up of the decline of Russia as a great power. Russia was already different to China, rising power. Russia declining power. This will speed up Russia's decline as a great power. And I think a combination of all those, we could see potentially um, some kind of palace coup, certainly. Um, it, it's, it, lots of things are on the cards, I think, now. It's, this is not... Putin, I think, has gone too far here. Um, and it's not sure... Where, where does it's it not go, so Darius? Where, where, we, where are we heading? Where is this going to end? How is this going to end? How is it going to end for him? Mm. Um, well, for him, it will end badly, as it always does for dictators. I mean, you know, they're not... Dictators don't go to their allotments and, and, and start to grow vegetables in their pension era. That never happens. The question is whether um, he takes so, us all with us. Lots of people suggesting if he's backed into a corner, that's when the nuclear deterrent comes out. No, I don't think so. That's when exactly when a palace coup would happen. It happened in the early 60s with Nikita Khrushchev, who also was erratic, irrational. Um, people thought he was a madman. And it led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. And he was taken out in the palace coup, replaced by Lenin Brezhnev. So, I mean, you know, there, there are saying nobody wants to go to a nuclear war. I mean, there are people in Russia who don't support that as well. Um, but, um, but certainly he is somebody who... Um, is very difficult. I mean, the psychologist who called this a hubris syndrome said it's practically impossible to negotiate with somebody like that because he thinks he's right. There is no kind of compromise central ground. And that will make it very different, difficult for both the West and for Ukrainians to deal with him. Um, and he has no, he's a sociopath. He has no, um, you know, he doesn't care about human life, including his own people. So the fact that Already, four and a half thousand Russian soldiers have died in only four or five days of fighting. That's more than America lost in eight years in Iraq, mm. just to put it into context. And he doesn't give a damn. These mm. just cannon fodder. You know, 18, 20 year old lads dying for, for his imperial dream. Do you think he's a well man from what, from what you know about him? I mean, you're saying he's, he's a madman. Do you think he's a well man? Yeah. There's a lot of rumors going about with his um, puffed looks and things that uh, he may be on medication well he certainly had a bit too ma- a few too many botoxes um and um, um um and he's paranoid you see the table i mean i've never seen such a long table in my life the, the you know the sitting at one end and, and his security staff or foreign dignitaries sitting at the other so he is paranoid about the covid um, um he, he's botched that whole dealing with the covid pandemic in russia um, so he's paranoid there. Yes, um, I think that he's not the healthy Russian leader as, as in the same way as he tried to be this macho leader um, in the first decade of his power. I haven't seen him take his shirt off for quite a while, thank God. Yeah, thank God.